The 40s featured the small Western Iowa community of Wyota and the superb combination of Phyllis Armstrong and Leona Campen, now Mrs. Leona Stapleton. The Audubon County Journal said, the success of Wyota could be attributed to Miss Campen and Miss Armstrong, who outconnected, outdistanced, and outlasted all opponents. Leona Campen Stapleton still lives in Wyota and is still involved in basketball. Back in 44, we played Gowrie in the finals and defeated them 44 to 25. And these games were played at Drake Fieldhouse, which uh, is a lot different to where they're playing nowadays at the Veterans Auditorium. They uh, were always hard fought games. They're not high scoring games. Well, our suits at that time, they were called silver and red, uh, but they're a lot like the suits of today. They were a two-piece suit. In 44, we were undefeated with 28 wins and no losses. It just, you just can't put in words how you feel. You're just all so thrilled that you just don't know what to say. This is the trophy we won in 1944, and the next year, this is the trophy they won in 1945. In 45, the team defeated Coon Rapids in the finals, 30 to 25. Both games were low-scoring games. They were more of a defensive battle than an offensive battle. Members of the state champion 44 team was Phyllis Armstrong, Francis Earl, and myself in the forward court, Lois Stephens, Gertrude Foster and Donna Scoombs in the guard court. 1942, uh, Maxine Armstrong and uh, played on the state runner-up and also the 43 consolation tournament team. Then in 44, Phyllis Armstrong, as a freshman, joined the squad. In 45, Betty Armstrong joined the basketball team. And in 47, the last of the Armstrong girls was Mary. In, in 1944, in the state champ, uh, tournament, Wyota scored a total of 166 points in the four ball games. Of these, my co-forward, Phyllis Armstrong, scored 84, and I scored 81. And of sub-forward, Dorothy Morgan, come in to score a free throw for the only other score scored during that tournament. This is the way it was all year long. Some, some evenings Phyllis would outscore me by several points and maybe the next time it'd be vice versa. We control the ball and we work for our good shots. My favorite shot, as the newspapers always said, was my Sunday shot, which was an overhead dazzler unleashed as I moved from the basket. Phyllis Armstrong's was an overhead shot, which made her almost impossible to guard out front. Well, actually, all we practice is one hour a day, and that was from the time we left the assembly room to go down, get dressed, and get on the floor. And all this time, there was no monkeying around because we knew when four o'clock come, or if it was, if we uh, went for practice from three to four, that bus was gonna leave here at a little after four, and we had to be on it, because. We never had no practices after school hours. Our coach was Joe O'Connor, and I don't think you can find a nicer man around than he was. He was firm with us, and we knew what he expected, and we went out and worked. A lot of them thought uh, we spent a lot more time, but we could if we would got there early in the morning, go down and shoot baskets or noon shoot. But as far as supervised practice, it was one hour a day. Well, this is marking my 15th year of traveling, first with the Wyota Ball Club as chaperone and scorekeeper, and now the last eight years I've been traveling with Anita Ball Club's boys and girls as their scorekeeper. <laughs>